Hey, what's going on, world? We are back. Finally, finally. We had a little hiatus because I'm a working actor and director and producer, etc. So sometimes I have to go actually do film. Uh, but fortunately, we finally got back in the mix. We got Jamie back with us. And me and him got figured out the schedules. And uh, so we're here with another episode, a new episode of Real Talk with Dominic Santana. And we have a very special guest. Abriel, could you introduce yourself to the people? Sure, sure. My name is Abriel Josephine Sincati, and I'm an actor. Sincati, is that Italian? Yes, it is. Oh, are you Italian? I am a little bit. A you little. can't really tell with my hair being dyed right now. But how do you yes. how do you be a little bit Italian? Just a little. Okay. Just a little. It's, just, it's snuck in there. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I like to give full dis full disclosures. Um, Abriel, uh, we just did a film together not too long ago. Um, so I did know her uh, before this, but met her doing that film. Um, so and we're going to talk about that a little bit because I got some really cool uh, moments on that film, The Madness, uh, that she worked with us on. Yeah. And so um, but before that, you guys know how I like to do things. We want to actually get in. We want to get to know the person a little bit. Uh, so first of all, let's start. Let's let's go to let's go to childhood. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to just jump, dive right in it. All right. Because uh, we got a lot of other cool things to talk about as well. <laughs> um, so let's start about childhood, where you're from, um, and how, how it was growing up. Yeah, yeah. I was, um, I was born in, I tell people Boone, but it's somewhere between Boone and Banner Elk, North Carolina, that I was born in oh, a little A-frame house. Yeah. Boone, I know Boone. Mm -hmm. Boone is pretty well i don't know i haven't been around mm -hmm. there in years but i've been like through it it's sure. pretty empty back in the day it is <laughs> empty some college hippies hanging around <laughs> so are you are you a country girl <laughs> boone is pretty country not necessarily i moved to fayetteville after my grandpa died when i was about one or so, so oh, i was wow. only there about a year oh so you grew up oh. in fayetteville i did i'm from fayetteville i know that oh why didn't i know that about you <laughs> no one told me uh -huh. but uh okay so you were born in boone moved to fayetteville yes um, why Fayetteville? Oh. Do you know why? So my grandpa was a military guy. He was in the special oh, okay. forces. Like my father. Okay. Oh, nice. Nice. I didn't yeah. know that either. Yeah. That's why yeah. I was there. <laughs> yeah. Usually Vietnam. Yeah. You, no one goes to Fayetteville unless uh -huh. <laughs> you don't just go, oh yeah, yeah Fayetteville. Why not? Oh, I'd love to be there. Yeah. Usually yeah. everyone's born there or drugged there by some family member in the mm -hmm. military, but I'm sorry. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, after my grandfather died, my parents moved there to help run his formerly special forces bar called the Silver Fox. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Had a bar. Yep. Did you grow up in the bar? I would be there on and off a little bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like roller skate around. Just like, hey, what's up? Really? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> okay. And so, uh, so what was what was school like? So I was a combination of homeschooled and mm. unschooled. Mm. Unschooled? Yes. What does unschooled mean? Unschooled, loosely my definition of unschooling is kind of like a radical rejection of everything public school system based. Oh, ultimately. okay. Like, well, like basically what I had to do when I got out of public school. Yes. <laughs> Unlearn <Kind laughs> all of. the BS. Uh-huh. Well, at least it was at your parents. It was, yeah. So at least they were thinking ahead. <laughs> it was like. They were. They told you this. Now let me tell you what it really is. Mm -hmm. So that was good. How was that for you? I mean, it was great. I really feel like I was raised on being able to learn who I really am as an individual rather than mm -hmm. like being treated as just like a body of students. Mm -hmm. I was taught the general basics of any subjects I needed, but anything that I wanted to research in like an advanced way was up to my own devices. Oh, nice. Yeah. nice. So how do you think that has affected you um, like as an adult? So I know like being a kid, you see things like, for example, my mother mm -hmm. used to talk to me a lot, you know, about life and give me gems and jewels that at mm -hmm. the time I was like, in one ear and out the yeah. other. What does that mean? But then as yeah, like like, <laughs> oh, you lecture me again. Uh -huh. and I find myself doing the same thing to my son now. Uh -huh. But uh I was just like, Oh god, another lecture. <laughs> but then when I got to, uh -huh. when I became an adult, I would find myself in situations and mm -hmm. you know, just how I viewed life where then I started to understand, oh, that's what she was telling me uh -huh. all those years ago. Oh, this is what this is, this is what that is. Sure. So it really kind of shaped, you know. Mm -hmm. the the life that I was moving in or even just, you know, things to watch out for. Mm -hmm. um, and it just affected me in a way that where I come from, a lot of people didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And so I noticed the differences in our lives, you know, the directions mm -hmm. they ended up going 
choosing or didn't have a choice, but sure. in the direction I went, although we all came from the same hole, mm-hmm. <laughs> so to speak, uh, in society, how did, how did that play out for you as an adult? Um, it's interesting, you know, because it's like, I feel like I'm very comfortable knowing who I am alone, mm-hmm. but in some ways like around people and just like hanging out with like friends, um, I still feel a little bit like a feral person that's been like unleashed onto society. <laughs> <laughs> so I stay quiet for the most part. Cause like, mm-hmm. you know, you learn more by listening anyway. Yeah. So are you okay. truly a quiet person or you're just quiet? <sighs> you're quiet amongst those people. But when you find somebody that's yeah. your lane, uh-huh. then you're like an extrovert or are you just a little bit. Uh-huh. I think maybe half and half, you know, I'm the same way. <laughs> It's, it's funny because there are people who will tell somebody like, mm-hmm. oh, Dominic, oh, he's a real quiet guy. Mm-hmm. And that's how you know someone doesn't truly know me. Sure. <laughs> it's like, or, you know, uh-huh. yeah, he must not have liked you. <laughs> if you think he's quiet, because if he goes yeah. into just quiet and observation mode, sure. he's just watching you or well, watching what's like, going on around don't you. Don't engage. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's how you, if anyone ever comes in like, yeah, he's a quiet guy. You're like, oh, I know he didn't like you. Noted. Because uh-huh. <laughs> anyone else would yeah. be like, him? Quiet? Uh-huh. So that, that's how you know I like you if I'm talking around you. Sure. You know what I mean? So, Same. No. Oh, oh, so you're talking to me. Oh. All right. So I'm on the list. <laughs> yes, it's I me am. and two other people. No, I'm just Basically. kidding. Basically. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> small circle. Are you a loner? Uh, I would say, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, like like I said, I'm just so comfortable being alone. Mm-hmm. It's not really a choice so much, but like I just kind of go do things by myself by default mm-hmm. without really thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Like when I was younger, like... As a teen, I would love to go to, like, shows by myself mm-hmm. and just, like, not have to keep up with, like, friends or a boyfriend and just, like, not worry about it. Mm-hmm. You have siblings? Nope. No si- Oh, you're an only child. Yes, I am. Oh, so you you are, <laughs> you are grew up being prepared to be yeah. comfortable in your loneliness. Well, not loneliness, but being alone. I mean, you could say lonely as well, for sure. Well, I hate the, I hate the term loneliness because uh-huh. it, it implies, like, you <laughs> don't want to be alone but don't uh-huh. have a choice. Um, be, I'm a middle child. And Mm -hmm. so um, I have a, my older brother had cerebral palsy. So he couldn't run around and do all the things with us. Mm -hmm. And growing up, he had a lot of medical issues and Mm -hmm. whatnot. And then I have my sister, who my mom had from her second marriage. Mm -hmm. And she was nine years younger than me. Mm -hmm. Uh, So now you have the baby. You have the sibling with cerebral palsy and constant doctor's appointments, surgeries, Mm -hmm. everything. And then you have the kid in the middle who's okay. Yeah, you know like, oh, I mean? he's fine. Yeah, Don't I was the it. he's fine kid. Uh-huh. Um, not anything negative, like my mom ignored me or anything. She didn't, but mm-hmm. I early on understood that they needed that extra attention. I understand. Um, so mm-hmm. t- thankfully, that's how my brain worked early on. So it was just, I was I learned to be okay alone. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people think like I'm um, not standoffish, but mm-hmm. just... You're like, it's weird. Like, why are you, are you okay? <laughs> My mom used to ask me all the time. Like, oh. <laughs> so, like oh. so this is me at like 12, okay? Mm-hmm. Sitting on the porch and listening to B.B. King. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is out west. So I'm sitting on the porch in a rocking chair, listening mm-hmm. to B.B. King, eating snacks. Love it. For hours, alone. And my mom, yeah, my mom really thought I was like oh. depressed or something. So oh. You need to talk oh, to no, somebody. I'm contemplating. <laughs> <laughs> right, like uh, I'm thinking about how I'm going to take over the world. Like I'm fine. Exactly. But I enjoy, I was actually having a good time. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it, and it even affects things like in relationships. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and friends, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because they're like, dang, dude, I haven't heard from you. Like, I'm not needy. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. I can be left alone to my own devices and will enjoy myself. Sure. You know, and it's not. I get that. Yeah, it's not that I don't want to be around someone. It's mm-hmm. just, but if no one's available to be around. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, or I, or I even go through my moments mm-hmm. where I'm like, I just feel like being, sometimes I need sure. to hang out with me. Oh, yeah. No, I, I definitely need alone time as an adult for sure. Uh, do you feel like that uh-huh. sometimes where it's like, yes, I need to hang out with my best Please. friend, me? I mean, leave me alone. <laughs> just want to listen to music. Oh. <laughs> what's your um, what's your sign? My sign. Oh, so, um, Cancer Moon, Cancer Sun, Capricorn Rising. So like mega emotional, mm-hmm. kind of quiet and standoffish. Quite a, yeah, them Capricorns can be mean. They can be. Are you mean? Yeah. Ah, oh, no. You don't seem no. like you have a mean bone in your body, but then that's usually the ones yeah. who will surprise you. Well, it's like. I don't feel like a mean person for like every hundred people, but mm-hmm. maybe like a hundred and one, I'll be like, I don't like you. 
<laughs> <laughs> so um so you so you were homeschooled so you didn't go to school yes. in public you know in a public setting mm -hmm. um so i was gonna ask like you know have you ever gotten like a fight or anything no but if you didn't really go that route you probably wouldn't have had uh -huh. too many opportunities you've never no. been in a fight i Not one i know right <laughs> i've wanted to be in fights when i felt like really? more angsty um, but I recently kind of like uncovered a memory of my friend getting into a fight at Islands when I was with her. So uh -huh. <laughs> this was maybe like six years ago. Uh -huh. um, it was me and her sister. And like these two girls, like we were just laughing at our own table. We weren't bothering anybody. Mm -hmm. But these two girls behind us were getting pissed because we were being kind of loud. Mm -hmm. um, and she said to my friend, I'm not going to say her name. I'm going to call her S. Okay. Just because I'm not gonna like <laughs> yeah, out you her fight. Put her out. But um, <laughs> in case there's pending litigation out there somewhere, <laughs> <laughs> so, like we got a name now. <laughs> she um she turned to my friend and she was like, "Oh, you think you're funny?" Which is so stereotypical. That's like a caricature of mm -hmm. a person. And S was like, "Yeah, I do." And then this girl just like poured her her ice drink oh all over S's chest, and they just like in their hair swinging, just like doing the thing, you know, where they're like spinning. <laughs> Did you run Did you... or like where, no? Where I was you? like. Uh, me and this other girl, um, H. You were like, I just got this outfit. I'm not. <laughs> it was S and her sister A. Mm -hmm. They started fighting the other two girls. And me and H were like, what do we do? <laughs> so they had it handled pretty much. They did, much. kind of. I was like, oh, God, I'm like supporting you. <laughs> you didn't want to jump, just, just throw one random punch? I mean, yeah. When you felt it like, was safe? <laughs> not when I felt like it was safe, but like you said, I don't really have the inclination to be like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to beat the shit out of somebody. <laughs> But I mean, like, given the time and day and circumstance, sure. But mm. not like this random girl who just, like, has a chip on her shoulder, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want you fighting. We don't want you out there oh. fighting any. Not are now. You sure? not, now you're like on, you a, are encouraging you're on a good track now. Like, we don't want, we uh -huh. don't want to mess that up. Some, like, <laughs> boxer roles. Or I, something. Can't, yeah, I can't see you, like, in jail <laughs> over a fight, you know? Yeah. I think if I was, like, <laughs> supporting a friend, probably. Uh -huh. Like, okay, I guess I'll help you. <laughs> I'm in it with you. So, so going back to homeschooling, <laughs> how, at what point did you, like, was it weird to you or just normal to you? Oh my God. And it then, was so weird to me. So it felt weird uh -huh. to you. It did. And I mean, like, I think as a kid, you rebel against what you're given no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's normal. That's healthy. And it's like, you're establishing your identity and your boundaries through being rebellious and angsty. Yeah. But it's like, I desperately wanted to be in school with my friends. So, like, you, so you did have friends. I, <laughs> I, so, did. I don't know that world, so I don't know how it works. Like you're an only child uh -huh. or were you just meeting yeah. people, going outside at 3.30 and just meeting kids coming off the bus? High like, key, kind of. <laughs> it was like, I made some friends when I was around like five or six. It mm -hmm. was this whole family and I would wait for them to get off the bus mm -hmm. when they were done with school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you did actually. I, did. I, was, I was joking. Not every day, but like when I wanted to hang out with them and we had like plans or something, I was like, okay, was like, it's almost like two thirty. So like, I was like, Ed, that weird girl's out at the bus stop again with the kids. There she is. And she's so sensitive. <laughs> so so th now your whole school mm -hmm. career, you were homeschooled. Yeah, I was. Okay, huh. and so was that Mama's choice or Dad's choice or both? I think it was ultimately both. Was both there a purpose revealed to you? Yeah, I mean, I really feel like it was just taking a stand against public schooling, ultimately, mm -hmm. and that they wanted to give me the individual education that they wanted to... They didn't like school themselves, mm -hmm. so they wanted to give me a different experience. Were either one of them uh, educators or teachers, or this was something they also had to learn Not along necessarily the way? before that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because my mother was a painter, and my dad um, has always been kind of an entrepreneur, but mm -hmm. I remember him making nature documentaries. As like oh, one wow. of my first memories of him. Oh wow, uh -huh. that's cool. No, because I noticed um, I don't know that full homeschool experience, but yeah. from just face value, mm -hmm. it seems like it worked better than <laughs> public school. That's really sweet. Uh, just even like anyone who's met you, and like when I first oh. met you, it kind of threw me off. As you know, you got kind of like a professor vibe. <laughs> You know, so, and what I mean by that is, like, not in a uh -huh. negative way, but just your diction, uh -huh. um, you know, how you speak, how you carry sure. yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd, I'd be like, okay, where'd you get your doctorates from? I would just assume, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's very kind. That means a lot to me. Yeah, so um, somebody was teaching you in a very good way. I appreciate that. I mean, I was also lucky to have a computer at a very early age, like mm -hmm. maybe three. I remember doing, like, educational computer games, like, right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Um 
but I also read copiously. Like I would go through phases of just like reading book after book after book yeah. every day, just because it was what I loved doing. I think I've always been drawn to storytelling. Yeah, through see, reading. like that, co- people don't just throw copiously around. <laughs> like that's not. <laughs> Thank that's, you. It's not a thing amongst the normal oh. people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, even as a kid, I remember my friends being like, like, I really speak so weird. Like, did you just say somebody stormed off? <laughs> like, <laughs> you sound like a book right now. I'm like, I can't help it. Like, dude, we're six, bro. <laughs> like, what the hell? But no, I, I do understand oh. that. Uh, I did go to public school, mm-hmm. but it was funny. I, I guess I was kind of unlearning myself. Sure. Um, just because I used to do weird things like mm-hmm. I would go in, one time when we were still living out west there was this one part of my life where we were living in this neighborhood across from a um, what's it like a flea market type thing mm-hmm. um, it, it was across from the neighborhood and so I'd go to cut some grass or do something mm-hmm. get a couple of bucks and go over there I would just look for cool stuff and I was always drawn to um, like books mm-hmm. and things like I had a college I'm, I'm, what, what am I then I think I'm like 11 or 12, <laughs> uh-huh. maybe, no, I wasn't 13 yet, but I'm about mm-hmm. 12, and I have this book from uh, a university on English, you mm-hmm. know, English 101, and I was just, I bought it because I was curious, what do the college kids read? What mm-hmm. are they reading? I want to know yes. that, uh-huh. and so just I just, skip it. yeah, I just started reading <laughs> that book. Yeah, I did, that's the uh-huh. funny thing, because fast forward, short, quick short story, uh, fast forward, because of doing things like that, that was me as a kid, high school, mm-hmm. I had this teacher, um, Ms. Romero. Yeah, I said it. Aww. Ms. Romero uh, in high school. No, it's not cute. No. Nope. See, I have no love for your boy. And so. <laughs> wow. See, like, I, re- I remember not from good things. That's not good that you're like the first teacher I remember. Man, she was awful to me. Well, no, I have like, some great ones. Yeah. Um, but as far as that's concerned, uh-huh. where that connects is I remember they forced me to go to uh, English honors. Mm-hmm. Um, is I <laughs> failed out of regular English, uh-huh. and then when they tested me, they were like, "Wait a minute, this dude's like testing through the roof." Uh-huh. And it's like, so maybe he's bored. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was more focused on trying to be the cool kid. Sure. So I was like sports and being cool. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be in there with the nerds. Uh-huh. And so they were like, "Look, dude, you you're gonna have to do something. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're too bored to be in this class apparently because you're not doing the work. Mm-hmm. And so let's move you something more challenging." So I was like, nah, "Screw it." So now I'm in there with the what we call the nerds. Uh-huh. Now they're probably CEOs and stuff. Those guys. Yeah, those guys. I really was a nerd inside, uh-huh. but I didn't want to be on the outside. Sure. You know, and I wanted to be cool and popular. Sure. Uh, but inside, I was nerdy and one of the lames, mm-hmm. <laughs> but loved it. Mm-hmm. I figured out they had it figured out all already. That's what made <laughs> them different. But um, I, anyway, she she presented this. Uh, a new lesson and she's like today we're going to teach you about writing a thesis mm-hmm. uh so and that's back when we had the i don't even the projectors i don't know what they're called now but had the projectors on the screen mm-hmm. and she's going through her lesson and making notes and she was like she got to and i'd never paid attention i didn't even show it with paper or pencil it used to piss her off love it yeah so yeah <laughs> no <clears throat> i had nothing okay I'm it's, here. it's ridiculous welcome. yes i'm used to being in a class clown and we're not oh. allowed to talk in her class so i'm just like going crazy Wow. And so anyway, I ignore it. I take a nap. Mm-hmm. She wakes, you know, she, like normal. And Dominic, are you ready? I'm like, ready for what? <laughs> and she's like, I want you all to now, you know, based off of, mm-hmm. and this was like the beginning steps of learning a thesis. So she's like, just off of what we talked about today, I want you to take a shot at writing a thesis based on what, uh-huh. you know, uh, based on you know, what we went over thus far of the basics of writing a thesis. And we'll get into more of it next class. So I'm like, all right, you know. And she's kind of smirky, like, yeah, good uh-huh. luck. I was like, can I borrow some paper from somebody like normal? Mm-hmm. And so we go to, you know, she's like, all right, you got, I don't remember. I think she gave us like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And so she's like, all right, you know, get started. She went and sat down at her desk like usual. Classroom was quiet. Mm-hmm. And here I am, you know, doing my thesis statement. I write it, I take it to her. I'm the first one to turn it in. I write it in like five minutes. Wow. So I take it and I give it to her. And... She great. She looks at me with the look she always gave me, like, oh. mm. and then <laughs> so go, supportive. Yeah, like I go sit down. <laughs> she didn't really think I belonged to her class. Um, her hair or something. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't think I belonged to her class because all the other kids that were in there, they were like nerdy, dressed nerdy, mm-hmm. very extra polite and quiet. Sure. Me, I'm loud, baggy jeans and all that, like <laughs> not wanting to be in there. Mm-hmm. 
but I had the brain to be in there. Oh. And so she didn't believe it, you know. So anyway, I give her the thesis. She grades it. She calls me back up there. Mm-hmm. And she's like, this thesis is perfect. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> no, it gets worse. <laughs> this thesis oh. is perfect. Uh-huh. I'm giving you an F. Why? Well, I'm so mad at her right now. <laughs> right. So she's like, I'm like, an F? Uh-huh. And she was like, yes, I told you you had to write your own thesis from your mind. And I was like... Did she think you plagiarized it or something? No, she was sure. What the hell? And she was like, you had to write your own. I was like, I did write my own. And she was like, there's no way you wrote this. It's like, I don't know where you... I said, lady, I don't come with a backpack. I have to borrow paper and a pencil. (laughs) Where... Did I pull this from? Like, like hiding a philosopher in your pocket? Yeah, like it's not like I had a cheat sheet. I didn't know what you were teaching today. But uh-huh. what she didn't understand was going uh-huh. back to uh-huh. the random books and stuff I bought. I had learned how to write a uh-huh. thesis statement when I was uh-huh. eleven. <laughs> Love it. So when you get to you know senior year in high school, uh, it was either junior year or senior year. But uh-huh. I get there and you know, I retain information really well. And mm-hmm. I would read these things, read these books over and over, you know. So I knew all of that stuff already. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, she gave me an F, and it stood, too. She, she left me with that F. That is so messed up. And I was like, prove it. Prove I cheated. I pulled my pockets out. There's nothing in my pockets. Yeah. I didn't bring anything to class. And Could she you even like, have, like, a cell phone back then in class? Uh, no. Yeah. No. What? Like, I had nothing. And so, but she swore up and down there was no way I could have written that. Man. But I was, but the flip side is, uh-huh. she still told me it was perfect. So I was like, well, at least I know it was perfect. <laughs> Man, it was so well written that she was like, I'm going to spitefully give you an F because yeah. I know you didn't. She could not believe that I wrote Man. that. Yeah. Oh, she gave me hell. That's so messed up. Like, on one hand, it's of such great <clears throat> value to be underestimated in yeah. almost any facet of life. But like. Yeah. You're just yeah. there to learn. You did she, the assignment. She definitely was judging a book by its cover. She would look at me and she couldn't see past, you mm-hmm. know, how I presented myself. Man. Um, and so she just, you know, she was just like, mm-hmm. I don't care. There's no way you did this and I'm standing on that. That's almost and it, was, it pissed me off. You uh-huh. see, I still remember it to this yeah, day. Of course you know do. what I mean? It's perfect. Here's an F. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> you couldn't have possibly done this. So I had another teacher, uh, her name was Mrs. Wade. Love mm-hmm. her to death. She was my drama teacher. Oh. First ever acting coach or teacher. Uh-huh. Yes. And so um, I used to write poetry as well. Mm-hmm. And so I we did like this dinner theater thing. And I'll never forget it. We had to audition what our talent was going to be uh, for the dinner theater. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, our parents were going to come and eat and watch oh. us perform stuff. Uh, so I turned in two poems. And I remember similar experience. And turned it into Mrs. Wade, and she read it, and she said, "These are amazing poems, but this everything has to be original. This has uh-huh. to be from you, your own thing." And Again? I was like, "Yeah, I was like, Ms. Wade, I I wrote that." She was like, "You no. wrote these." I was like, "Yes." I was like, "Can you find it somewhere else?" You know, like, "No, you can't." I wrote this out of my brain. Mm-hmm. Her response was different though. Mm-hmm. She was in awe. She was like. You're telling you swear mm-hmm. that you wrote these poems, and I was like, yes, that's what I write. And I brought my little, I had a little book. It was like one of those memo books, the black and white cover. <clears throat> and I was writing a book, and I was like, one day I'm going to publish this. So all yeah. year long, I had been writing poems in this uh-huh. thing. So I brought her. It was two poems I pulled out of there. So I brought her my book, and I said, yeah, look, I write poetry. And she started reading through some of them. She's like, I guess you did read this. I mean, you did write this. Oh my God. And so she was like, okay, now you've got to perform these poems. Mm-hmm. Like, this is amazing. You've got to do this for dinner theater. You know what I mean? That's awesome. And it, that, just, it takes that one person that believes in you yeah. to give you that leg up. Yeah, or just to care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, sure. But that's my story. But it's, mm-hmm. I'm just relating, you know. Uh, uh, that's beautiful. Back to where, you know, I was mm-hmm. unlearning in a different kind of way, mm-hmm. uh, just kind of on my own. And then, like, my mm-hmm. mom. And I had my crazy uncle who I love to death. But... Um, you know, he was just teaching me things, you know, early on as well. <laughs> you, we, we all got a crazy, most of us have a crazy uncle. Yeah, we do. Which one isn't, though? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's always your favorite uncle. For the sure. crazy one. Uh-huh. But back to unlearning. So you you had, you had made some friends. <laughs> um, and this is in Fayetteville, right? Yes. How long were you in Fayetteville? So I was in Fayetteville until, I mean, like, throughout my family's experience of running the bar for my grandparents. Mm-hmm. My grandpa died. Um we moved back and forth 
to like the Raleigh Durham era area and would mm-hmm. come back to Fayetteville. But it was like when I was 14, we moved to Wilmington. Mm-hmm. My dad was like, all right, we're going to go to either Raleigh or Wilmington. Where do you want to go? And I was like, well, we were always happier at the beach because mm-hmm. we would come and visit when I was younger. And I was like, I love Wilmington. I want to go there. So you guys legitimately yeah. just made a toss up decision. Of, we did. Because yeah. most people are like a pull to Wilmington for some reason mm-hmm. uh, or job, family, whatever. Um, so, sure. but you guys actually just said, hey, which one? Which, where you yeah. want to go there to the beach? Which like... It's nice to be valued as like a little kid in that way. To be like, hey, where do you want to live? Mm-hmm. I know you're. Just oh, they a kid. asked you. Yeah. Oh. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Your parents were ahead of their time <laughs> with, with raising children. <laughs> Very considerate. I see. I see. I guess I got to implement that a little more with my kid. <laughs> Probably be best. Uh-huh. And you chose Wilmington. I did. Why not Raleigh? I did. Um. I don't know. I mean, like, I think I had gotten a little bit of the taste of like that stuff was filmed in Wilmington and I was like, I don't, I can't really articulate why, Mm -hmm. but I do know that I want to be closer to that, Mm -hmm. you know? So, so you had an interest in cinema. I did. Even as a child. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean like, I remember being like heavily affected even by like the Lion King as a kid. It's like, (laughs) Oh my God, this is crazy. Like I love, I always loved storytelling. Yeah. Any kind. Lion King is one of the best movies ever, by the way. Still, too. Oh, yeah. I watched it the other day. I'm not ashamed. Uh Love it. Love it. The cartoon, (laughs) though, not the not the real one. Yes. (laughs) The original Lion King. For sure. But no, that's that's wild. So Mm -hmm. what was it about film that Mm -hmm. drew you in? Because I have not the Mm -hmm. same story, but I knew as a kid, you know, how magical it was to me and what I wanted to do. People thought it was weird. My mom even still says to this day, like, I wish I would have, like, put more into it. I just thought you were a kid. Kids just (laughs) say stuff. You know what I mean? Uh She was like, but watching your trajectory, I didn't know. And she did do some things, you know, between working and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. She took me to a few little commercial auditions and things. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I'd been saying it since I was a kid. And it really was magical and special to me. I'm sure for Mm -hmm. different reasons. But, you know, what was it for you that Mm -hmm. made it? drew you drew you in so much sure i mean i think you know i think because i had more of a lonelier upbringing Mm -hmm. i really had um like an inkling to understand the human experience ultimately Mm -hmm. and it comes through like both wanting to learn but also like yearning for human connection ultimately so it's like it felt like i was able to get little snippets of life that i wouldn't be getting and understanding otherwise Mm -hmm. you know did you feel like um like almost like traversing through other lifestyles and seeing how other because I don't know mm-hmm. so I know you were raised you were homeschooled uh-huh. <clears throat> but I don't know how if you were sheltered or not sheltered were you seeing like yeah. different lifestyles and how different or were you watching film like mm-hmm. people live like this <laughs> or no, that's I mean, a place like, weirdly enough I think that in some ways I was mega sheltered but in mm-hmm. other ways just like through being adjacent to like them having to run a bar until I was around like 10 or 11, Mm -hmm. I was not sheltered in some ways as well. Right. Yeah. I'm sure you've seen crazy stuff in bars. Yeah. (laughs) Uh Mm -hmm. So you, you come to Wilmington at 14. Mm -hmm. How was that experience? Cause it's quite different than coming from Fayetteville. Um, I think while still, cause you were still homeschooled even through high school. Yes, I was. Oh my Um, God. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, good on mom and dad, but (laughs) I could imagine. Sure. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. And, you know, it's like it's hard not to want to, like, rebel against, especially your parents as your teachers. Yeah, because now um, you're getting into teens and you're I'm sure you're meeting other oh, yeah. teens who are like, you don't go to school. Yeah. Um, I think, like, unfortunately, I didn't really have a lot of friends throughout my teens because, like, I made oh, really? friends young as a kid and that's easy. Mm-hmm. But it's like when you're like an awkward teenager, it's like harder and harder, especially when you've moved somewhere new. Yeah. And you don't really have, like, um, just, like, groups to, like, learn and, like, oh, I'm going to go meet these people that have, like, the same interest or something. So were you, like, socially inept or? Um, I don't want to say socially inept. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> more just, like, much more quiet and more observant mm. and, um, you know, just chilling by myself. Because mm. my, um, my cousin uh, was homeschooled. Oh. Uh-huh. And so I got to see a little bit of that, you uh-huh. know, that because there was no prom, there was no sure. playing high school sports and all that stuff. 
Um, so he was definitely <laughs> <laughs> when he was old enough to like really hang out with uh-huh. us and like start going out and sure. you know doing stuff like that, going to clubs and things mm-hmm. like that. He was so socially awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, but like when it's just yeah. us, he wasn't though. Sure. He was he had a great personality, he was fun, mm-hmm. we would have a good time. But then we'd go <laughs> out places and stuff and it was like, dude, yeah. get out of the corner, Kinda man. Freeze like, up. Talk. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> people, people are like, Your cousin's so weird. Yeah. And I'm like, he's not, he just, you know, <laughs> you don't he's trying to go through the whole backstory of why. He'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> So, you know, I had to actually work with him, like, dude, yeah. just talk, even talking to girls, like, <laughs> like, this is how you approach a girl. Sure. Hey, the worst you can say is no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then as he started to do more of that, you know, then mm-hmm. he started to find his lane, you know, mm-hmm. and then he kind of blossomed. But it For was, sure. there was a lot of um, <laughs> social cues he just hadn't learned. Yeah. No, I get that. And I mean, like, same for my experience as well. Like, I feel like at least as a teen, like, meeting people my age at the time, it was like, I always felt kind of like an old person interacting with younger people. I can see that. Like I would never feel like on the same page. I'm sure you were like twice as. And I would like shake somebody's hand. Like Like that kind of thing, you know, stuff like that. I imagine you being like the other kids feeling like hanging out with one of their teachers. Yeah. Like what? Why are you? I mean, I'm glad Uh you're smart, but why are you this smart? (laughs) Like you're annoyingly smart. That's very sweet. I appreciate that perspective on it. Yeah, so so how did you feel? Like, no prom, no mm-hmm. none of that. I know you knew that stuff was happening, right? Yeah, I mean, like, in some ways, I feel like, at times, I was like, oh, I wish, like, I could have, like, a little prom experience. But also, like, I don't know that that really aligned with my interests anyway, you know? Mm. Like, sure, that would be nice, but, like... You were kind of above it all. Eh. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're like, that's normal people stuff. Like, ugh. I have um, too many brain cells for that. <laughs> <laughs> when we moved to Wilmington, I pretty quickly started going to um, Kukaluris every year that that happened. And that was like... Now, why? Huh? Why? Like, I mean, that's a good thing. Yeah. But like uh-huh. something had to happen for you to be like, sure. I'm going to go to this film festival. Well, it was really just like being around little coffee shops and like seeing that it was advertised. And I was like, oh, what's this? And like, oh, I want to see that movie. What or like doing around coffee shops at 14? Just hanging around. You I don't know. You as hell like, <laughs> at 14. I would go like write my diary. Reading the news, <laughs> sipping coffee. Like, <laughs> kind this of. kid. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Uh-huh. Sure. So you were at the coffee shops. And mm-hmm. now at this point, because you're an actress now, but at this point, is that even mm-hmm. like a thing in your mind? I know you you, uh-huh. you love the magic of film by this sure. point, but are you thinking mm-hmm. like, I'm going to be in this business? I think in some ways I was always very, very afraid of trying to pursue acting because it was like thought of as something that a more extroverted person would be doing. Somebody more mm-hmm. charismatic, more outgoing. No. And it's the nerds. It's us. Exactly. (laughs) But I didn't think of it that way. So Mm. I was like, well, I don't know if that's for me. I know that I would love it. I don't know if I would be good at it. Um, But going to the film festival here was Mm. like another way to really like fuel that thirst for wanting to pursue acting. Mm. So at what point, like what age range were you Mm. when it first hit that, even though you thought this may not be something for people like me, Mm -hmm. but at what point did it hit you where he's like, I kind of would like to do that, though, or try? Yeah. Maybe when I was, like, 22 or 23, I think, at the time. Not sooner? No. Well, oh, I wow. mean, like, yes, in that I would, like, go and do background a little bit for, like, extra cash when mm. I could. Um, but, I mean, I just, I always thought of it as, like, that's not for my kind of personality. Mm. Until, like, COVID happened, and I was like, well... I'm reevaluating my life as a person. I'm reevaluate, reevaluating my life in my relationship. Mm-hmm. Like, now, what about COVID? Made uh-huh. you just reevaluate your whole life? <laughs> well, I was because <laughs> you're you're used to being yeah. alone, so it wasn't For like sure. some people were like, "I'm uh-huh. alone now." Well, I'm thinking when I was about 19, I had had one relationship before with just like a kind of casual boyfriend that I had. But I started a pretty serious relationship that lasted about six years. Mm -hmm. I even moved to Atlanta with him for like two years. Moved outside of Asheville after that. Then came back to Wilmington. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit after that COVID happened and I realized like maybe I'm unhappy living in compromise to kind of fit in my relationship standard of what our life should be. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, why don't I take some acting classes at the same time? Mm -hmm. Just kind of. You know, I got to learn to act like I want to keep doing this. (laughs) 
kind of. That's where it started. <laughs> yeah, it felt, I don't want to leave, but I need to be able to play the role. Yeah, I no, mean, it kidding. sounds bad, but it felt like after being unhappy for like a long time, I realized that I had been acting already mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. No, just not that. really like implementing it where it needs to go. No, yeah. I, I get that. I find my I found myself acting for me actually worked the reverse of what people would think it would. It mm-hmm. actually made me be more real with myself. Definitely. Um, cause I too felt that way. Remember what I told you going back to, um, and I won't spend too much time on it, but no worries. going back to, um, me, me trying to be something else, trying to be the cool kid. Mm-hmm. And the, cause I, you know, also I was, I felt like I was an ugly duckling, um, for so long, like growing up. Um, and then I got to a point where I was like, wait, girls think I'm cute. Wait a minute. <laughs> you know, I guess I'm uh-huh. not that you know people sure. started complimenting my hair because mm-hmm. that growing up i didn't care about my hair and all that stuff i was a wild <laughs> kid running around deserts and stuff oh, for fun it. and but you know as you get older you start caring about your appearance and sure. things like that and then girls are like you have really pretty curly hair and i was like i do mm-hmm. so then i started doing my hair more you know Wait, what i mean uh-huh. yeah let me put some grease in there and stuff <laughs> Get them curls popping, you know, caring about my hair mm-hmm. cuts and, you know, then what I'm wearing and mm-hmm. all that. And so then I was like really trying to be part of that. I was wanting that group to accept me. You know I understand what I mean? that completely. But I didn't realize they were the sheep. Mm-hmm. They were all just trying to be this this construct and be like each other. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't until theater arts, you know, I got into theater arts where – those those were the weird kids, the you know mm-hmm. the nerds, the weirdos, the <laughs> are super artists, and you know uh-huh. all of that. And but when I got around them, it felt homey. Sure. You know what I mean? Like why do I feel more comfortable here? Right. Mm-hmm. This is in is because of who that's who I really was inside. But mm-hmm. that was like the only place that I could be who I really was. You know what I mean? I completely get that. Yeah, I was an artist. I was, you know, an intellectual. I was, you know, I love to read. I love to write. I love to discover. I love adventure. I love mm-hmm. all these different things. I love the arts, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was just, you know, figuring out, okay, I'm doing this. I'm with these kids. They actually inspired me, though. Mm-hmm. They inspired me because I was watching them be so free. Because they were exactly. that in the class. Mm-hmm. and out of the class where me I was that in the class but I'd leave those doors and I'm back to you know the popular jock guy you know sure. what I mean um it's vulnerable yeah yeah and I felt mm-hmm. so I admired how free they were and I was mm-hmm. like how I'll never forget there was a guy that was in our class named Tyrone shout out to Tyrone if you're out there <laughs> um but he was he was gay mm-hmm. you know um he never said I'm gay but it was clear mm-hmm. you know what I mean and it was in that space he was comfortable mm-hmm. enough to be himself and this was at a time where it wasn't as accepted you mm-hmm. know publicly sure. um but i admired him too you know it was my first time really being around someone gay mm-hmm. you know and he was just the nicest dude and um a thing about me i used to sing back then too mm-hmm. and he was known for his singing you know what i mean nice. everyone knew tyrone could sing i was too embarrassed Mm-hmm. to sing and one time I in the back of our theater arts class it was it was attached to this building with the auditorium in it so mm-hmm. our class actually had a hallway that led from our class to the backstage mm-hmm. so our teacher would give us like you know 30 minutes of free time toward the end of the class and I'd go back there and there was a piano back there I used to play by ear wow and I would go back there and I was alone and it was on you know mm-hmm. the stage but the auditorium was empty mm-hmm. and I would play and sing songs that I created that's wonderful. And one time, but I never got caught. And then one time, uh-huh. oh no, there was a girl I started seeing, and um, or uh, whatever you call it in high school. But she was the only one I let in on that little secret. So mm-hmm. she used to love to hear me sing. So we'd go back there. She'd sneak away with me, and she'd sit on the Aww. piano next to me, and I'd play for her. Mm-hmm. But she was the only one. It was my secret. Don't tell nobody about this. You know, I'm a thug. Okay, I can't have this out in the street. Uh-huh. <laughs> so That's I'm too cool for that. You know. <laughs> and so one time he came back there. He it was like a movie. Mm-hmm. You know where you're like you, you're having this moment. And it's all quiet, uh-huh. and then I hear this screaming behind me. Oh my God! You can see. Oh my! And he takes oh. off running back to the class. I'm like Tyrone, Tyrone. No. Yes, Tyrone, no. (laughs) And then I just hear him just blabbing. Y'all got to hear. But he was like complimenting me. He was like, y'all think I can sing? He sings. I'm like, Tom. So now everybody's Uh like 
we got to hear this. We got to like, no, he's lying. He's lying. Uh -huh. But he was championing, you uh -huh. know, my talent. And uh, so I never forgot him, you know, for that and just how, you know, how he was and whatnot. And, and even being exposed to him mm -hmm. and getting to see that early on to learn. Because I was very, my mom was like that. My mom was very accepting of everyone, all backgrounds, all races. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. So I didn't grow up in that one way of thinking, mm -hmm. you know, kind of situation Thank like God. some do. Yeah. So I had a very kind of eclectic <laughs> upbringing because mm -hmm. um, my mom was a weird artist. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Intelligent woman, strong, powerful woman. Uh, but I get a lot of that, you know, eclectic artistry mm -hmm. side from her, you know, and That's being wonderful. open to these things. Yeah. My mom was mm -hmm. An R and B singer, and then went out west, and what? she even joined a country band, and was singing so in the cool. country band for a while, and she uh -huh. wrote and all that stuff. So, wow. um, I met a lot of different characters, mm -hmm. a lot of different people. Um, I remember she dated this British guy for years, <laughs> named Chris, sweetest guy ever, and it was just so funny because mm -hmm. you know we were just kind of rambunctious, and he was <laughs> so soft spoken, and probably, probably you know, proper. yeah, he uh -huh. put up with us. You know, oh. for, and loved us, you know, loved us to death. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, that but that was my first time being around a British person, you know what I mean? So, he had to deal with us making fun of his accent oh. and like, why do you talk like that? You know, <laughs> he would just cute. laugh it off, you know. But, oh. anywho, that's uh, about me. But, uh, so you are you're going to Kukuloris, you're starting to pick up some things. You did mention mm -hmm. that you did background work. A little bit, yes. A little bit. I want to know your uh -huh. very first day oh, of doing background day. work. If I can remember, I think it was when I was living on <coughs> Fifth downtown, and I think it was like a random Nicholas Sparks movie or something. Mm -hmm. But they were doing a scene for like the 1940s, so I was like, "Oh, this is amazing!" Oh, nice. I've like stepped out of like a period piece right now. They like put my hair up in all these crazy like curls and like. God, these shoes were so stiff, though. Now, had you been on a film set ever before that point? I mean, like, more informal ones. Not ones like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, the big the big boys. Stuff. Never like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think my main memory is that the shoes were too small, and they <laughs> broke, and I had a huge blister. Oh, God. <laughs> but what did you feel like? Was this before you had actually settled in your mind that you want to pursue acting? Oh, or, yeah. Or at least uh -huh. consider it? This was before that. It was before that, for sure. And it was like, I think that kind of was like, oh, I mean, like, this is being filmed with, like, a block from my house. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I want to start pursuing something like this if it's yeah. so, like, at least back then prevalent in the community as well? Mm -hmm. You know, like, to be in North Carolina, it's like at least Wilmington around that time period. That was pretty, yeah. pretty booming. Yeah. So you, but what was the feeling? Because I remember the first, mm -hmm. my first time. Now yeah. My my story was a little different. Like I I'd told to you, um, well, just like I had said before, that I knew from a kid mm -hmm. that this, I wanted to be those people in that little box. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, you know, so it was like build up. That's why I even got into theater arts class. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like maybe I'll learn something, and I mm -hmm. did. I actually I learned improv. Sure. You know, which carried me a long way once I got going, mm -hmm. you know, and in auditions and whatnot. And they're like, that was great. Um, what you give me something a little different, like switch it up. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know improv. It's like, uh -huh. what do you mean switch it up? Oh, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. This is what the script says. But I could easily go, oh, switch it up. Boom. Go and mm -hmm. give them something completely different. And they're like, that's it. Yeah. I got roles like that before. It's a critical skill. Yeah. So have. it was, it was super important to learn improv and i will give that jewel to any of you actors out there oh yeah uh, learn improv uh -huh. it's like my teacher said if you learn improv you'll always work absolutely and so and she was actually pretty correct uh -huh. about that so something i didn't expect initially was that any job that i've booked i feel like it's been an unspoken guarantee that you will improv mm -hmm. and obviously starting out like i didn't think that was going to happen but like boom it's time <laughs> how are you well, with improv good good i mean i'm more i'm more comfortable and more versed in like dramatic improv rather mm. than comedy i'm really comfortable in that are you not funny at all i wouldn't say that i'm not funny i don't no offense <laughs> but it's like i'm trying to wrap my brain uh -huh. around it and uh -huh. like i i think it would be funny seeing you do stand up Oh God! Because <laughs> you're yeah. like, why is this person doing stand? -up? Sure, are you good? Are you humorous? <laughs> um, Do you laugh a lot? I mean, I think when I'm like alone with somebody that I feel very comfortable about, comfortable mm. with, 
I'm okay, like, joking and, like, doing, like, comedic stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, it's really, like, a skill that I'm unlearning to, like, not be so... I feel so comfortable in drama Mm -hmm. that comedy has really been, like, a major a major speed bump that I'm trying to get over still. And I feel like I've been pretty good with that. My, um, my acting teacher that I've work with, been working with for the past three years, he's been giving me comedy for almost every assignment that I have now. <laughs> and you're like, oh, God, yep. why? What uh-huh. did I do to you, bro? Sure. So, um, no, I, you do come off as like a um, very serious person. <laughs> like when I first met yeah. you, I was like, uh-huh. Okay, you know, it's, I can't really joke because I love to joke around and stuff sure. with people. So I was like, uh-huh. but I'm always, I try to be cognizant of, mm-hmm. you know, how people's personalities yeah. are. Oh my God. I mean, I love humor though. Like growing up, I would go to stand up shows like every Thursday. They'd have an open mic. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, would you laugh? Underage? Or were you sitting oh, there yeah. like, <laughs> no, I loved it. I love to laugh. <laughs> it's just like, I can't see you falling back <laughs> laughing. Really? Yes. I no, mean, I'm I sure mean, you like, can, but. Like, I'm the person at comedy shows where it's, like, I'm almost too supportive. Because, <laughs> like, I want them to do well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so you give them a bonus laugh just to yeah, keep them going? Kind of. Kind of. I'll be that person for sure. Yeah. but yeah. And also, there's nothing wrong with, um, which I'm sure you already know this, mm-hmm. but there's nothing wrong with being um, drama-focused. Yeah. Um, because some some oh. people... Oh, <laughs> it's all good. A little nap. <laughs> perfectly landed on my lip. All good. <laughs> Just know him better we'll, now. We'll, we'll fix that in post. <laughs> but, uh, but, but no, um, yeah, and you know, it was funny because after we met, mm-hmm. and then I purposely went out of my way mm-hmm. to go joke with you. I wanted to see. I don't oh, know yeah. if you noticed it, uh-huh. but I was like, I was like, I was like, what? I'm gonna go mess with her. I want to uh-huh. see how serious she really sure. is, or you know, uh-huh. she she relax. Oh, how did I react? It was great. I did. No, okay. it was great. It made me more comfortable <laughs> with you. Okay. Um, because I went and joked with you a little bit, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Okay, she's laughing, so she does laugh." <laughs> okay, good. All right, we can work with that. Of course. Yeah. You know I mean, I, mean? I think just like meeting a bunch of people that I haven't really been around previously, I do default to like being more serious, just because I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. be observant mode. Don't let them know you're weird. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, I'm serious. I'm meant to be here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. So meeting you, we. Uh, well, I was going to say for those of you that don't know, because the movie's not out yet, so none of you know. Um, but it will be coming out soon. A film called The Madness that um, you were suggested to me. And I directed it, by the way, for those of you that don't know. Uh, it's my second film directing. Um, I inadvertently ended up co-starring in it as well. It was not the plan. For all the better. But uh, fortunately, mm-hmm. looking back, it was like, okay, everything that happened was meant to be. Oh, yeah. Um, so, uh, Ben Woods, our DP and good friend of mine and good friend of yours, uh, came to me and I love giving people their flowers cause I'm not going to act like, Oh, it's my idea. Mm-hmm. So when you guys see her continue to, you know, blow up and expand in her career, you know, I'm like Dominic Santana, he saw it right out the gate. Aww. Like she was suggested to me, uh, by Ben Woods and I trust Ben's, um, taste so much, mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to film that, mm-hmm. You notice I didn't audition you. I didn't ask you to come in and read, send anything mm-hmm. over, anything. Ben said it. I said, Ben, are you sure? And he said, dude, tr- you know how Ben talks. Dude, <laughs> trust me. Dude, trust me. She's Love phenomenal. Uh-huh. And I was like, Ben, if I bring this woman on this pro- <laughs> on this movie and she's terrible, like I'm never going to trust you again. That's on you, dude. Yeah, like this is going to uh-huh. be horrible for us, Ben. Like we will not have time to go replace her. Uh-huh. Are you 100% sure? He's like, I'm 1,000% sure, dude. Oh. So I was like, all right, um, she's hired off of your word. And, you know, you were everything and more uh, that he described. Uh, I was really impressed, and this goes back to improv, when you said mm-hmm. you're better at uh, improv uh, drama. For sure. Um, I remember people, there were some times where you would jump into character so fast that it threw it. You know, it it threw people back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Not in a negative way. They were just like in awe of like, holy shit, did you see her? Did you see that? Like, she just, and that impressed me. Mm -hmm. Because you seemed so much more polished than someone at the point of your career that you are. You're a baby, so to speak. That really means a lot to me. 
but you're not, you know, I guess like you were when you were 14 in the coffee mm-hmm. shops, you didn't seem like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> then you quickly jumped in. And so where do you think, because I know you said COVID, mm-hmm. COVID had happened and you started training. Sure. So, okay, so I've jumped into the madness. Let's mm-hmm. go back there real quick because uh, yeah. we kind of jumped away from that. Mm-hmm. You were, were you just in the coffee shop reading your newspaper again and you're like, I want to go to acting class oh. or like, How did that happen and where did you go? Yeah, I think it was like I, I think maybe I was, I was doing background on something at the time and a girl named Heather, I can't remember her last name now, but she recommended Actors Arsenal to me Mm -hmm. and she said she was taking a Meisner course, which I'm now taking, which is a very like cyclical thing. Um, It was at her recommendation and I think it was like a PA that had pulled me aside and he was like, hey you need to take classes. I feel like you would be really good at this. Like, but why were people place. telling you that? You were a background um, actor. Like, you have no lines. Yeah. How did people sense that? I uh-huh. mean, it, it's easy to sense when you get around you, but, um, like, how did they... Yeah. Um, it was on reprisal. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, they had all these background girls categorized as, like, the pinups. Mm-hmm. And then they had <laughs> the five deadly pinups. And mm-hmm. I was one of those five girls. And it was mainly, like, we were assigned to be like running around with guns. Mm-hmm. So I had like, God, it was like an MP40 or something. And I was just like running around in burlesque clothing, <laughs> but it was so much fun. And I think because we got like a little more coverage than the other people, like oh, somebody so they got noticed to see something. your reactions in your face. Yeah. That makes a difference. It does. Cause it sure. does stand out and you go, wait a minute, that's, she's an actress, uh-huh. you know? So someone suggested Actors Arsenal to you or how'd that come about? Two along? people did actually. And I was like, okay, well, like now that somebody said it twice, I think I should definitely pursue it. And mm-hmm. it was like maybe during like halfway through COVID or something, they like had been advertising a lot because, you know, nobody was really doing much of anything at that time. Mm-hmm. So I just started taking classes. I've, um, I've sent over six people to them. That's wonderful. Uh, Because I've only heard good things about them. And the people I've sent to them have reported back to Uh me that they're getting so much out of it. Uh Well, I mean, it is legitimately the only place that I've ever, like, voluntarily taken classes. Mm -hmm. And I could not feel more accepted. Just, like, such a non-judgmental environment, especially coming from, like, a completely different educational background than anybody else. Like, I never felt judged or just, like, made to feel like an outsider at all. Mm -hmm. That's the funny thing about Uh you is um, the things that you say you worry about people thinking you're a little weird or Uh something like that. Yep. But in my experience, it's you were very familiar to me the way you are. Um, I was like, she has no idea. Like, you're not weird at all, actually. Thank you. You're kind of (laughs) built for this. Like, you will find a lot of actresses who are just the same way. Mm Um, so in, in once you get around more and more and more and more, you're like, mm-hmm. oh, it, it's like if you're not like that, you're the weird one. <laughs> sure. So it's almost like being around people that can't help but be themselves was really yeah. inspiring and encouraging in that way. Yeah. So if I don't I don't know if it's odd to you, but I never found you weird at all. Thank you. If that makes sense. I appreciate that. Yeah, no doubt. That's something I'm still getting over, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, it's not uh, weird like, at all. Like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> no, you're an actress. Like, <laughs> yeah. I expect nothing less. Mm-hmm. And the better you are, the more <laughs> the outsiders will see you as weird. Heard. Um, but so you're, you're at Actors Arsenal. Mm-hmm. You're going through that. What's your first role mm-hmm. on whatever as an actress? My first role, yes. so um, with speaking lines. Um, should I mean like they haven't come out yet? Does it really matter? No. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, my first role. So I got signed to AMT a year and a half, almost two years ago now. Mm-hmm. And my first audition that I got was for the Fin Cannons for Boys of Summer. Mm-hmm. Um, Shout out to the Finn Cannons. They were one of the first ones to start casting me early on. Absolutely. And I ended up booking my second audition with them. Oh, so your first role was like an actual... Um, yeah. Boys, you should be SAG eligible. Hmm? You should be eligible. That's a, That was a SAG project, right? It was. Yeah. But it's like, um, it was just one day of work, though. So? You should be able to sign up from there. SAG don't care. SAG want that money. Yeah. <laughs> They're uh-huh. like, oh, you had... Did you say a line? Yes. <laughs> Pay the fee. <laughs> Welcome to SAG. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> I thought it was like you had to have like five or something. To be it may I, it may be different now. Uh-huh. It may be different now. I know when I uh, first got going, it was like just show up in a SAG project. Wow. Yeah. And uh-huh. so then I should be. <clears throat> yeah, it was like I don't care. If you just said, "Hey, like you boom, <laughs> pay your money." But I've I've been there for a while now, so I don't I know things I know the fees change mm-hmm. and whatnot as well. And so um, yeah, I mean things could have changed, but mm-hmm. when when I started. That was enough to qualify you to go ahead and sign up. Wow. Um, right now is probably not the best time, but. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe wait a yeah, little. Just, just a couple of just months. Just in case. <laughs> yeah, so Boys of Summer, that's dope then. So that's mm-hmm. your first role. Mm-hmm. Do you remember how many lines you had? So originally I had one role, but they cut it out. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know how much of this I should say. <laughs> I signed an NDA. Um, well, just don't tell the okay. storyline, and you yes. should be safe. Okay. Um, or the character name. I play a version of the villain mm-hmm. who ends up being silent, mm-hmm. but um, I have to like lure somebody into oh. the woods, essentially. And that's harder. People don't realize. Sure, but I'm so much more comfortable not speaking sometimes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> People don't realize how much more work goes into not having lines, mm-hmm. but you're a character. Sure. Because you've got to express everything. And mm-hmm. a, an older actor told me years back when I first got going, and I was mm-hmm. so pissed off. I was doing a scene, and they took my lines from me uh-huh. because they were like, oh, it'll be better. It's too much talking going on. The mm-hmm. scene needed to move faster. So, Dominic, we're just going to go with a look. We want you to react with a look, but don't say anything. I was pissed. And I, I was, understand. yeah, I was ready to just uh-huh. be done with. Like I kind of just was like, screw this, you know. Let me just do the, what they ask, and so I can go home. And the older actor, he was like, dude, you're in a really good position. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, once you learn to speak with your eyes, he was like, you can say so much more with your eyes when there's mm-hmm. no words. Absolutely. You're with the words, you're limited to say what you know was written, mm-hmm. but you can say a whole lot with your eyes. One hundred percent. And I was like, I really thought about that. Mm -hmm. And we shot the scene and it was like a close up of my eyes, you know, and I'm reacting to what's happening in the Mm -hmm. scene. And I remember when they said cut. And I had this in my mind, what he told me, because it changed my whole thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I'm going to I'm going to say a whole lot, (laughs) you know, with my (laughs) eyes. Uh I don't know how, but I'm going to. Give them a monologue. Yeah, (laughs) Exactly. And when they said cut, they were like, whoa. And I was Hell like, yeah. whoa, what? And they were like, dude, your <laughs> eyes. Like, you just, you're saying so much. with you. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, he's right. And so now I utilize that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's a part of my arsenal. Is like, that, yes, that is important, too. But I didn't mm-hmm. know it was that important. Incredibly. But so tell me, not, you know, about the storyline or anything. Mm-hmm. But so, because I'm an actor, so I remember this, and I remember my excitement. Uh-huh. What was your feeling? Because I thought you were going to say like, "Oh yeah, my first role was like, you know, I was in a backyard and you know, just said a couple things and just they had a camera phone." <laughs> but no, you had a nice, you know, start off. Yeah. Um, what was your feeling? You know, because you've been practicing. This is you've uh-huh. been going to Actors Arsenal. Yeah. And now you got an agent now, mm-hmm. and then boom, you get a role. That first day, what is that feeling? I mean. One that I did not expect it to happen as quickly as it did, mm-hmm. um, and that I was scared shitless, <laughs> but incredibly excited. Yeah, that sounds um, about right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> especially when you see like everyone is looking at you oh, and we say action yeah. is like, uh-huh. I can't screw this up. Mm-hmm. I can't screw this up. I'll never work yeah. again. Well, it's like especially because um, the director David Henry. I think I was like just past the age of watching Wizards of Waverly Place, like one of those mm. Disney shows. But he was like the brother on that, so it was like oh, okay. this whole experience of like having him rehearse the blocking with me, and he's standing in to do that. I'm like, this is so surreal and so crazy. <laughs> just yeah, especially yeah. I think it's like as I got going in this business. Excuse me, as I got going in this business, and the more projects I worked on, and the more mm-hmm. people I met at events or premieres or whatever and I started running in is it is kind of trippy in the beginning when mm-hmm. you're running into people that you were used to watching on some of your favorite shows For sure. or your favorite movies and they're just talking to you normal yeah. like yeah we got to hurt them do this scene and you're just like so bizarre i just can i hug you like, is this weird like <laughs> oh, that's so 
<laughs> like I, like uh-huh. Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence. I learned. Yes. I learned such a great lesson from him mm-hmm. on a movie called The Black Knight. I was just an extra. I wasn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a real role or anything. But I got near him. Mm-hmm. But my family, like. You know, mom, we didn't have a lot of money. Mom worked mm-hmm. two and three jobs at a time. And that was at the time where um, Martin would come on Sunday night and I was a kid and my mom would cook. It was like a block of this show, Martin Lawrence show, mm-hmm. Martin show, Living Single, and uh, the variety show Jim Carrey was on, Keenan mm-hmm. Williams, uh, and Living Color. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The whole Sunday night was that block on Fox, and my mom. That would be the day she would cook a big meal, and because during the week she's working. Like my mom sure. was home, make sure we're good, uh-huh. and she's back out to go to the next job. Mm-hmm. So on Sundays, that's when she would do her big meals, and we sit down as a family and we just laugh for an hour and mm-hmm. a half watching these different shows. So Martin was more than just a show to me; mm-hmm. it was family memories and all that. This person doesn't know any of that, and he's not responsible. Sure. <laughs> to but acknowledge it's any of that, to you. it's foundational right. to your like family memories, right? But when you meet the person, they don't know any of that, uh-huh. you know, okay. and so you're just looking like, I just want to hug you, I just want to hug you. So I was in awe, you know, of him mm-hmm. when I saw him, and I'm standing as close as we are, and they were telling us, you know, it was the extras, don't talk to you know Mr. Lawrence, uh-huh. and, you know, like they normally do, but I couldn't help it, and I was like, what's up, Martin? And he's like, what oh. up? They were fixing yes. his collar or something. He's just like, what up? <laughs> and you have a similar thing like he did. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was first learning about acting, you know, and I've r- run into some actors and stuff, they would damn near have to light candles and do a seance to get into character. Mm-hmm. And, you know, or just be super deep, like I'm preparing for my character. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's what you're supposed to do. Uh-huh. Like, just, I got to go sit somewhere for 30 minutes and just, sure. Mm, you know whatever (laughs) but (laughs) so martin lawrence comes on and you had the same thing and that's what really struck me about Mm -hmm. you when we were working together um i didn't know before that until Mm -hmm. this and um if you get a chance i don't know where it is now but Mm -hmm. check out the black knight Mm -hmm. and there's a scene he goes back in like medieval times falling into this lake he works for this uh uh-huh. like amusement park that's like medieval nice. times theme but it's a shithole uh-huh. and, and falling uh-huh. apart uh-huh. and he falls into the water hits his head and then he's like transported yes. back into actual medieval Amazing. times right hilarious crazy movie they believe I he's bet. the black knight because he's black <laughs> <laughs> so, yes i've arrived but he uh, he's really not a knight so he's like fronting uh-huh. and you know a bunch of stuff goes left because he has to actually like help them and go to uh-huh. war and stuff and but then he ac- ends up making it back you know mm-hmm. through the water and he's back in modern times mm-hmm. and he realizes he's back in modern times and he goes just like berserk happy to see everyone because mm-hmm. he was like shitting on the place the whole time <laughs> And whatnot, but now that he's back after mm-hmm. that experience, everyone's looking at him like, "You okay?" Because mm-hmm. he's like hugging everybody, oh, running around, so I'm happy home. to see you. Yeah, <laughs> thank God I'm back. But he just exploded, and I remember he's actually he's not like the Martin you see on TV and movies. Really, he's actually really mellow, hmm. which kind of threw me off because I'm uh-huh. looking for crazy. Martin. I would not expect that. Yeah, yeah, me neither. Uh-huh. And he's actually really just mellow and tranquil. You know what I mean? And so we get ready to do the scene and he walks on the set and he's got all his handlers and different people. Crazy. They pull his gloves off his hand and, you know, oh, he's on top of the world at this time. Mm-hmm. And um, they pull his jacket off. It's February, but we're pretending it's the summer. So, you know, their jacket's off, mm-hmm. everyone. We're freezing. Mm-hmm. And they pull his jacket off. And he said, Mr. Lawrence, whenever you're ready. You know, that's when you're really big. Mm-hmm. When they just look at you and call you by your last name. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> and uh-huh. so, so he sits there and it looks like he's kind of going through the lines in his head for a second he's still chill like you know mm-hmm. and he starts rubbing his hands together and then he started kind of like hopping up and down a little bit hyping himself up he clapped mm-hmm. his hands a few times and he was like <clears throat> alright all right, I'm ready and they're like alright and he's ready and action takes off running explodes doing his Martin thing And I was like, holy Uh shit, what just happened? Uh I said, wait a minute, man. Why am I doing all these (laughs) Uh (laughs) lighting candles and sitting Indian style, you know, to get into character and all that? This man, they said action. He was ready. 
And I was mm-hmm. like, I like that so much better where I can turn it on. I had to find my switch. Sure. I want to be able to just flip it on when it's go time mm-hmm. and then flip it off when I'm done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's what surprised me about you because I saw that same thing. It's been a while since I've seen that. And outside of myself and a few others, but that was he was the first one I seen do that in person. Oh. And so when I worked with you, and when you do these uh, indie films, you hope you get some of the best. You try, mm-hmm. but you never know. And again, I would you were suggested to me. See the others I had either worked with or you know did read some of them, mm-hmm. or I just I knew what they could do already. You were like. You know, jack in a box. I didn't know what I was getting. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, I was just hoping, <laughs> like I said, that mm-hmm. what Ben told me was accurate. And we were doing scenes. And um, I remember particularly, you remember being at the, we were at the farm in Regal Wood mm-hmm. in that little pond area. And we were all like shooting the zombies and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you were like, you know, behind Bree <laughs> and scared to death and whatnot. Uh-huh. And you had these really dramatic moments because your your character was like mm-hmm. the one who didn't have a gun, wasn't into mm-hmm. all of that side of it, sure. really dramatic, you know. And you would, you know, this is how you're talking right now. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's what you need. All right, cool. And I'm like, you ready? Yeah. You said action. <laughs> I mean, you would just boom. You're there in it already. And I remember the look on some people's faces, like, what the hell? Just how? Like, how is she doing that? You know, even some of the other actors like, hmm, I gotta learn what how do you do that? <laughs> so is that from your training or is that just a thing you found your switch early mm-hmm. and you know how are you able That's to just tough. jump right into emotion, you know, mm-hmm. scenes like that? That's such a significant compliment already. Thank you. You're welcome. Um it's almost like I'm trying to think of like a comparison. I think of kind of like a coffee maker, you know, like starting up and like slowly percolating and getting things ready. It's like, I, I think I would explore my emotions very young just because I was deeply sensitive as a kid, like Mm -hmm. arguably like hinderingly sensitive. Mm -hmm. Um, So like I knew that I could cry at the drop of a hat just Mm -hmm. because um, it was just how my personality was kind of wired to be. But because of that, I've kind of learned a system through my process of like how to get it mm-hmm. going quickly. And yeah. mostly it's music. It's music. Yeah, I noticed that you have your, I remember I asked you about, I was like, what are of you course. listening to? What, what kind of music <laughs> uh-huh. does Abriel listen to? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's a lot of music. Some of it's real memories, some of it's fabricated memories, but I like to tie them together with whatever I'm listening to. And mm. that kind of really helps. Yeah. Nice. I do the same thing. Um, <laughs> sort of quite different oh we're getting the the lights but um (laughs) uh, kind of a similar thing where you know i'll put on music or voices Mm -hmm. or just depending on what character i'm playing sure um uh, music is or just even audio period is like um it's like some kind of uh energetic lubricant into transitioning absolutely your mind you know into being Mm -hmm. this character or whatnot so i definitely get that i was really you hit so many marks that when i would see you doing certain things or even like how you'd come mm-hmm. alive in a scene where it was just like, oh yeah, yeah, she's got it and she's got it early. Like you in 10 years from now, like I'm really interested to see because you're you're at such a high level so early that where you're gonna be in 10 years, and I'm not even meaning your career, I already know you're gonna make money, you're gonna do your thing. Thank you tremendously. Um, very much, um, but just your talent level you know, that is, I'm really interested in seeing what that blossoms into just in 10 years, maybe even five. You know what I mean? That means a lot to me. I don't even know what to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> just accept it. Thank you. That's your okay. reality. You just okay. have it, man. You have it. So um, real quick, I did want to get into, yes. so I got the experience of your feeling on that set. Mm-hmm. Fast forward a little bit. You've mm-hmm. done some other projects. Um uh, like Zombie Baby, uh, you work with other people, yeah. uh, big and small projects, which is great. You're having mm-hmm. a great start. Um, how was your experience on the madness, even with the little we had to work with? Oh my God, it was wonderful. Did you enjoy yes. the character? Of course. Well, I mean, um, through the auditions that I've had so far, I don't get to play a lot of like intellectual women, mm-hmm. surprisingly. Really? Yes. It's a lot of like 
That's because they haven't talked. They don't talk to you first. Uh, <laughs> and they uh, talk to you first. They're like, no, <laughs> we know we need to move her to this character. At least, you know, starting out, it was a lot of like very ditzy women for the most part. So really? it's like it was deeply refreshing to be uh, able to play Alexandria. I imagine you struggle when you're playing oh. someone ditzy. Kind of. I mean, like, <laughs> in some ways, it's like, you know, still like missing some social cues sometimes. Like mm. things go over my head so I can be more naive definitely mm -hmm. but did see itself is kind of hard yeah you gave me um remember when we were down like in that swampy area uh -huh. where your character explains what's going on from the cdc and how all this got started mm -hmm. i you know it, it's funny because when i casted you i didn't even think of that part like mm -hmm. that was such an important part the and so and I was like, yeah, that was, yeah, I was, I was like, like, I, I got to explain the whole virus. Yeah, I just trusted Ben. And then when we got to that part, uh -huh. I was like, oh, shit, I didn't even think of, she's really going to have to sound like mm -hmm. she's from the CDC and knows what she's talking about. And when I said action, you rolled into it the way that you did. I was like, oh, God, so perfect. Aww. You know, I was like, thank you. Thank you for being that perfect. Thank you. Um, so I, you know, I was like, does she love these kind of roles or, mm -hmm. you know, cause the way that you handled it and it's so believable. <laughs> you know, I was actually, I thought we, I, I would do it two or three times and she'll warm her up. <laughs> no, you didn't need no warming up. Oh. You were right in there. I was like, mm -hmm. Jesus. Okay. And so how was I as a director? Did Wonderful. you enjoy being directed? Of by course. Me? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can tell me the truth. You know, I'm still new <laughs> at this thing here. No, I think right off the bat, it was like, like I've maybe mentioned briefly before that you were both like grounded, but intuitive at the same time. And mm -hmm. especially in that you are an actor yeah. being able to relate to your actors makes such a huge difference. Yeah. And that, that, that immediately, especially in like any of the scenes in, um, whiskey tango mm -hmm. where I had a little trouble for a second, it was like, you knew to just like, give me a second yeah. and then it would fly. Yeah. Cause you, we had a conversation. We shot, uh -huh. I remember we shot that scene when it was your turn. We shot the scene and you did great. Mm -hmm. But I was like, this is a moment. It though. needed more. I need uh -huh. I need you to really go there. And so I remember I came and talked to you and I was like, remember, this is mm -hmm. the first time you guys haven't seen this yet, but you will. <laughs> remember, this is the first time you're actually realizing coming mm -hmm. out of your mouth is you're saying that your husband might be dead because yeah. you're just like saying it. But then it hits you sure. of like. A, did I just say that? And mm -hmm. B, that could actually be a possibility. And you looked at me and you were like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I got you. <laughs> I was like, okay. And then we rolled on it and it was just like the whole room just felt it. You know what I mean? That's you so look, a tear dropped down. Because you gave me more than I was expecting. Aww. I just wanted a little bit of like some kind of Ooh. emotion. <laughs> When you turned around and you were talking and you were going through the whole thing and that mm -hmm. tear started rolling, I was like, me and mm -hmm. uh, me and the producer just looked at each other. I was like, oh. the value of her level of acting in this scene especially. That means a lot. Yes. I think stories of watching a loved one go through addiction really resonate with me as well mm -hmm. too. So that hit home in some ways. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now moving through the future, Okay, we're mm -hmm. gonna, as we wrap this up, you guys, for Jamie Kills, and he's gonna throw a shoe or something <laughs> over here. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> but what kind of roles mm -hmm. in just in dream world, if you mm -hmm. just could have what you wanted, oh, that's what such a kind of question. roles, I know, would you see yourself playing uh -huh. or dream roles? Oh, dream Fiction roles. or non fictional people doesn't matter. That's like, tough. Um, I mean, I think on like the heavier end of things, drama is easy for me. It's where I'm comfortable. It's almost like if I can like cry or scream, I'm like, all right, now it's on. Kind of, you yeah. know, it's you such have a, an like, amazing scream. Thank you. You're so quiet. Remember that day I asked you, I was like, <laughs> we were down in the swat and I was like, I need uh -huh. you to like, give me a horror movie scream. Uh -huh. You know, when you see the zombie, <laughs> I honestly wasn't expecting much because you're so quiet, Thank you know, you. soft spoken. Uh -huh. I was like. What is Abrielle gonna be able to give me oh. here? Um, I don't know, just just the shriek or something. Oh. And when you did it, I was like, holy shit! Oh. <laughs> I was like, that's great a horror movie scream right there. Thank you. I feel like I've yelled very little in my life, surprisingly. So maybe I've like saved them up or something. <laughs> well, it was great. We all of us were like, I didn't expect that. Yeah, me neither. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was perfect. But what what could you see yourself? Dream roles, like dream roles. Yeah. It's tough. I would say like 
maybe some like let's manifest this thing up Uh uh-huh like a role that i really admire is michelle williams in manchester by the sea Mm -hmm. that's a heavy dramatic one i don't Uh, think i've seen that um i think casey affleck is the lead devastating so sad but Mm -hmm. beautiful yeah um and maybe on like a lighter note this is kind of embarrassing (laughs) um there's a movie called almost famous that i know every line to why do you know every line to almost famous um Growing up, my dad was a musician when I was mm-hmm. young, and it's about a touring band and a young journalist who's like an underage kid who mm-hmm. gets assigned to basically follow and make a story about this band, and it's mm-hmm. hilarious. It's like the story of this writer, which is what I identified with younger, mm-hmm. just like following these like crazy, charismatic, ephemeral people that were just so cool. Mm-hmm. But I like, remember the movie. Yeah. I was uh-huh. wondering, is that some, some type of something you'd want to do? I think so. Okay, what about action? I mean, yeah, I love action stuff too. Like being able to run around with like an MP40 was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so what what would you say? Drama is your favorite genre? Horror? What? I love horror. I mean, I think I watch horror maybe maybe like 60, 40 out of what I watch. I uh-huh. see stuff like Insidious yeah, and things like I think definitely. you would like be masterful. I'd love that. Yeah. Um, I just saw Evil Dead Rise, the most e- recent <laughs> Evil Dead. It was There's so a new good. one? It was so scary. Oh, wow. Terrifying. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to do some more <laughs> horror movies, too, and whatnot. So, Hell yeah. But I could see you. There's horror movies where they're they're good and they're mm-hmm. scary, but the actors, it's like, oh, you didn't expect much out of them. If they don't believe it. And then yeah. there's something I brought up, Insidious, because, uh-huh. you know, there's like, it's horror, but you still need high level actors. Oh you yeah. You know what I mean? Or even like quiet place, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. Love it. Where it's like you can really act and you get the horror. I love mm-hmm. those type of genres. Same. The Sharknadoes and stuff, you know, <laughs> it's not really for me. But oh. <laughs> but I see that for you. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna hold you up anymore. Oh. Uh it was a pleasure having you join us. It was a pleasure um, speaking to you. I'm glad you decided to come hang out with us. Of course. I wasn't sure if I was going to get you. You were like, you want to interview me? <laughs> kind like, of. I was like, are you sure? <laughs> and so, it, you know, and I'm still getting to know you. So I, I was like, I don't know if she's big on like public mm-hmm. speaking or like. I'm normally never. Uh, I was like, okay, but I'll do it for Tom. Oh, uh-huh. well, I appreciate that. Of course. I was hoping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, do I have to talk about myself? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I, you come off as a person who you don't mm-hmm. do that a lot. I don't. You don't enjoy doing that. I think I got into acting to avoid speaking about myself, which mm-hmm. I realize is like not the thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're this interesting, it's gonna be hard. People are gonna want to know more, and Thank so, you. and then as talented as you are, um, like I said, you know, it was mm-hmm. never BS. I strongly feel, you know, you're gonna be a major deal. Um, I won't be surprised to look over across a film set that I'm not directing or producing. I'm just, I'm hired to. And they're like, oh yeah, we hired her too. Like, Gabrielle, <laughs> you know. Oh. So, um, or just even cheering, watching your movies and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And so your first big premiere though, I have a special request. <laughs> I just want a ticket, okay? Okay. Uh, you don't even have to, I don't have Heard. to sit near you or anything, but just, You're you know, funny. I mean a ticket, you know, so I can come support <laughs> and, you know. And you're going to hear somebody in the rafters go, I knew it. Oh, you're the best. That really, really means a lot. Then after they escort me out, you know, just (laughs) text me where the party's at. (laughs) The The feeling is mutual, Tom. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm sure we'll work together again. I love that. I'm just excited for you and your future. And I hope those of you watching, you remember her from this as she becomes one of your favorite actors and characters out there in multiple projects. So tell the people where they can find you and keep up with you on social media. Sure. Sure. Um, I actually only have one form of social media and that is Instagram and it is my name. It's a B R period I E L L E. Um, and I'm working on a short right now called catalyst and that should probably be in Kukulors this year. Nice. So you yeah. went from attending Kugelors to now having projects in Kugelors. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Well, congratulations. Um, we will also, you know, I'll be letting you guys know when the madness is about to drop and you'll see advertising, et cetera. But look forward so to one of her many projects. This one is really cool. She does an excellent job. You're mm-hmm. not going to want to miss this. The twists and turns and everything. She really brought it. So look forward to seeing you in that as well and all the other future projects thank you Tom. and jamie <laughs> you can take us out buddy we look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode of real talk we love you 
and appreciate you. See you next time.